Okay, so we're starting again, once again on Intersection, as is usual for round two is gonna be Google Frog versus the Sponge who is filling in for Old Ghost Stalker and yet this... Okay, I need to refresh. So we have some subs. The Sponge filling in for Old Ghost Stalker and Forever filling in for... Shoot, I don't remember who was there. But yeah, they're going, you're going against Lowry. I don't remember who was actually there. Not two seconds ago, who was against Lowry. But anyway, that's who it's going to be. So Forever and Lowry are going to be playing. Google Fong and Sponge are going to be playing right now. That's who we're watching. Mm -hmm. This should be a really interesting match. The Sponge is a skilled player. Very strong player. But then Google Frog is Google Frog. Hey, Google Frog is a terrifying player to fight against. Speaking as someone who plays against Google Frog fairly frequently. <laughs> <laughs> Google Frog basically on many occasions has, because of the way that they play, they are a very detail-oriented player. And if you are not as detail-oriented when it comes to, especially to your initial economy, you're just going to be behind. There's so many little things that I have learned about what you can do to really optimize your early game from playing as Google Frog. Google Frog telling me these things. For example, going for early metal, then energy, or going, making sure that you have it, it, basic little things in terms of when you start setting up. For example, when you first set up... Okay, hopefully the sponge is properly set up. Anyway, when you first set up, you can actually tell where your commander is going to be when the game starts, and then you have to use that optimally use that to make sure that it has to move as little as possible to build a factory and build your first few metal extractors. That's something that Google Frog told me a few months ago. Like stuff like that. They're tiny little details that make all the difference. Especially at this level of play. And anyway, both players starting out very even. The sponge a little bit behind for power generation, having gone for solar and instead of wind, which on this map Wind is 0 0.6 to 2.5. Really, the only downside is defense, because wind is very frail. And so the sponge going for light vehicles, Goofrog going for Cloakbot Factory, and the sponge primarily focused on Scorchers, no surprise. Bit more focused on economy, though, having a couple Masons, all, or a Mason already, and going very quickly for another one. But that Mason has nothing to do. Yep. Oh, and you pointing need out need to clear out those glaze first before he can move down. Yeah, we can point out in the chat that Google Frog likes to use gimmicks as much as possible. Well, 0k has many gimmicks that can be used. Yeah. It is a lot of... It is it is quite cool like that. It's... I almost wish there was a bit more to that. But then again, I play Guilty Gear, so I like gimmick games. <laughs> yeah, well... What is a gimmick if the, the player base is so small that it's hard to make up what's a gimmick and what's... Uh... Well, it's more just that every factory has its own thing. Like, Cloak by Factory is all about cloaking and shield bots that has the shields, and then light vehicles and heavy tanks are... They have a completely different move type from everything else and different pathing as well. Like, they they have a turn radius and they have to worry about that stuff. And you have the jump factory, which is focused on fire and jumping. Like, every factory has its own things that it does that are... Yeah. I mean, that's... Now that I say that, I don't even understand why people would ever say this is a gimmick RTS. Like, all RTSs do that. That's called asymmetry. That's how asymmetric yeah. games work. Well, you can see now, Google Frog keeps all his raiders together, just like we pointed out earlier. Yeah, with the Flash and of Might. And, and Sponge is not moving out. He's not moving down. Well, the Sponge was going to move down, but then got... Yeah, but the Sponge moved back because they saw the radar dots coming in right here in this little strip. And I thought, oh crap, Google Frog's attacking. And Mark. they decided to move back. Actually, they're being indecisive. These Scorchers are just touring the center of the map, oh, not boy. doing anything. That commander is going to be a problem in the center. Oh yeah, Google Frog being very aggressive with this early commander. Wow. Not only that, he it's also a uh, anti... Um, what is it? It's a riot commander? Yeah, well, <coughs> what does it have on it yet? Yeah, it's a riot cannon. Yeah, it will be able to deal with this fairly well. It's basically a leveler on legs. Well, the sponge going up this hill here, and that is... Well, Using the legs of his bots as much as possible. Yeah, Google Frog, however, the... is being... I think Google Frog's going to be able to escape these Scorchers. Yeah, the Scorchers are trying to pin Google Frog down. Or Google Frog's... Google Frog's glaives down. 
And apparently the sponge is still having frame rate issues. And actually, the sponge is having massive wow. CPU. I mean, look at the lag and s oh my goodness. I mean, I can't seem to get yeah. the tools working properly, but do I have? I see what off? he means. Oh, that's why I have it off. Yeah. Wow. They are getting 600, no, 866 milliseconds lag. And their CPU is being way overtaxed. Something is weird is going on. Something very bizarre is going on. I do not understand what's going on here. Yeah, there he goes again. I mean, the sponge is doing surprisingly well for being at apparently a very low frame rate. And these scorchers... Oh, he's also having leg spikes all the time. Yeah, that's bizarre. I think there might be a hardware issue on the sponge's side. Unfortunately, Tick coming in, uh, stopping the sponge's is... rather strong attack, and that is... He could have expected this. <laughs> yeah, the that was... That is a common defensive maneuver. So maneuver. obvious, and you even have the time to make the Tick as you approach the factory. And at the same time, Commander is not going to go down. The sponge's commander able to get away and able to get his beam laser. Bit of a threat, though, does force the sponge back into their base, and at this point, Google Frog, I think, is just going to go for the kill. There's yep. not a whole lot the sponge has to defend with, and Google Frog knows this. I mean, Google Frog sees the commander going out there, sees the couple scorchers, and otherwise they don't. It's see only anything. made glaives in this game. That is fairly common, especially at a high level. It's, there's no reason to get out of the glaive spam unless you absolutely have to. If your opponent basically either out micros you or decides to go for warriors of their own, or either warriors or any other riot units. But if you can micro the glaives, then it's usually best to stick to glaives. <laughs> or lots of defenses. Lots of defenses also stop the Raider game. But these glaives, they are going in for the kill. They want death. They want blood. And I think Google Frog is going to be able to get that. And the sponge is commander. Yeah, that, that's, that commander's dead. The sponge is throwing in the towel. They're self-destructing everything. Boom. Or actually, no, no, they're self-destructing the... Oh, that is clever! No, they weren't self-destructing everything. They self-deed the commander intentionally to... Oh, and then they do surrender. I was about to say, I think they <laughs> self-deed the commander intentionally to try to destroy as much of Google Frog's army as possible. And maybe they did. Maybe they just surrendered after they realized that wasn't going to work because the position was terrible. That's actually something I've been kind of interested to see if people were going to do more often. Not for any particular reason, just because blowing up a commander is a lot of damage. Like, yes... It is. Um, it used to be one of the most common tactics in uh, most of the TA games, actually. Was to rush in and <laughs> smack him with the commander? No, to just make good timing with your commander death. Ah, okay. So either by self... Uh, even um, in XTA, where uh, there was a lot more micro going on, you would self-destruct uh, raiders to deny uh, reclaim. Oh. It's uh, common in every other TA game, in Zero K, I haven't seen people do it that much. Yeah, which is kind of funny because using your commander in most TA games for that would be suicide. You'd lose the game. Zero K being no, something it's, it's a nuke. Yeah, but it's also death. Like you, yeah, if you, you use the commander, comments. you lose the game. No, yeah, it depends on the game mode. Yeah, Zero K doesn't work like that by default, but most TA games do, or TA based games. It was either a nuke or a D gun on your commander. Well, anyway, we're going to game two. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, Sponge is having problems. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I really wish that Sponge wouldn't have those problems because that just makes it that much harder to have anything go on. Nonetheless, it wasn't that such a bad game. No, despite the lag it went spikes. went pretty well the from the, the, for the first five minutes. The Sponge was doing a good job. They had the right ideas. They threw in the right units. They just sort of... Do you want to watch Drone Randy? I kind of do. I think... Is this going to be... I think this might not actually end up going anywhere. 